What's up, everyone? So I just got done with, or a couple days ago, got done watching Netflix's uh, Social Dilemma. Uh, I don't know where I'm going to go with this video. I'm just kind of going off the cuff. And um, it was a interesting, uh, interesting uh, take on how the big tech companies, Facebook, Google, a la YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, the whole nine yards, how much influence they have on our society and how the technological advances over the years has made things much easier, right? There's a lot of great positives from technology. I mean, you know, you don't know, you want to find a place to eat, boom, you go on Yelp, boom, hit directions, boom. Google Maps, by walking distance, I've used that on vacation. Boom, boom, boom. Tells exactly where to go. You're good to go. You know, you're bored. You want to go on the internet. You want to check something out. Look it up. Boom, boom, boom. Pops up. Everything just at your disposal immediately. Great, great technological advances. Me being from the Silicon Valley, right down the street, or all the tech companies are around, around down the street within 15, 20 minutes, even closer. I can understand this. Um, that being said, um, a lot of the social media, I mean, it's, it's pretty obvious, uh, when like, I don't really go, like I have a, I have a Facebook public page for my YouTube channel, but I also have one, uh, a personal one, which I rarely go on anymore. But when I don't go on Facebook for a while, I just keep getting the damn notification. I get the email and it's like, they want to like rope you in. They want to rope me back in and they send me a message and it says, Oh, you have nine notifications on Facebook. You've missed a lot, James. Go and check it out. And I once in a while I'll check, but usually I just delete, delete, delete. So it's like they're trying to rope me in. They're like, how do I get this guy? If you haven't seen the social dilemma, you should watch it. They 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 show a fictitious portrayal, although it's a it's a fictitious portrayal with a guy like this standing on a platform and people are just pressing buttons. But in reality, it's a way to show how what they're kind of just pulling pulling strings on you. You know, as an, as an individual and the strings are just pulling, okay, let's send this, let's send this, let's send this. They know all your behavior tendencies. Um, it's a little bit creepy in a way. Once you get a phone and I'm filming on a phone, they have all your information. Unless you're off the grid, um, which is pretty much barely anyone, everyone on this planet pretty much has a smartphone. They know exactly where you are. Uh, that's why I'm totally against them uh, making you download, eventually suggesting and downloading an app for uh, a vaccine, but that's for another discussion. They have all your information, everything, you know, your spending habits, right? They, they compete for your attention. That's one of the key points that all these ex-employees in the tech industry on this documentary were talking about. They're, they're demanding your attention and they don't care what. And same thing with YouTube, right? You get recommended videos, which can be helpful at times. But I think one of the dangers is that if, if let's say, let's talk about um, religion. If you're an atheist and you watch a YouTube video um, because you're an atheist and then the watch time is very high, the YouTube algorithm is going to suggest another similar video for that. And you go, oh, let me watch that. Let me watch that. Let me watch that. And you end up going down this rabbit hole. Now, when you do this, you end up watching a lot of different videos. Or I should say a lot of the same types of videos with the same viewpoints. So you end up uh, gaining some knowledge. That's the positive. The negative of this is that you just get that one viewpoint. And then you end up just being stagnant in your thinking if that makes sense and they talk about this a little they talk about this at great length in the social dilemma documentary um and they blame a lot of it on the divide of america i don't have the exact the exact statistics on the uh divide because i can't remember but it's pretty obvious right you can just see it right now some people hate trump with a passion they think that they're, the, the Democrats think the Republicans and Trump are the biggest threats to America because he's a racist, he's a bigot, the KKK's all out, out there in droves and it's causing more divide, it's causing hatred and they, they can't stand it. Conversely, 
the Republicans think the Democrats with the whole socialist socialism, BLM, New World Order, government surveillance, the whole nine yards. There's a lot of a divide. And with the advent of social media, everyone has an opinion and everyone can post something, tweet something, put, put a video out. And things that, I mean, we've always had conflicts and had have had divide in America, but because everyone has a voice, it's just constant. There's no let up. If you hear about a shooting at a school back in the 80s or 70s, 60s, 70s, 80s, you may hear it on national news if it's huge, but if it's a small town murder in Oklahoma, you, if, unless you're from Oklahoma or around that surrounding area and you and you get the newspaper, you're not even going to hear about it. And then that's where the whole media comes into play as well. So it's not just social media, but also the media, the mainstream media, which is completely... So sorry about the uh, abrupt stop in the video or cut. Um, I got a phone call from work and it interrupted my... My video, uh, right when I was talking mid-sentence and then I had to go to work and come back. So anyways, let me just finish up and I don't want to redo this video. So like I was saying, um, it baffles me that, but it doesn't surprise me, but it baffles me that some people, a lot of people are uh, take a lot of things at face value. And I don't blame people for that because, especially in America, you would like to think that what you see on TV, the information that's been being given by our leaders random uh not random um politicians and people in the cdc and the world health organization and, and and the rest of the gang you would like to think that they have your best interest but um there's a lot of ulterior motives whenever there's a power at the top there's there's um abuse of abuse of power but anyway uh the last couple um thoughts before i depart is uh jonathan Haidt. he's a sociologist who um talks about the direct correlation between uh female teens from 2010 all the way till now and the amount of increased teen suicides amongst uh, female teenagers and he um, says that this pertains to generation z i think it's between i think if you're born in 1996 or later 1997 or later and then there's a big spike from 2010 so that puts people's uh, that puts the girl's age around 13 and 13, this is the time in which you know, you're going through puberty, you're gonna have a lot of mood mood swings in general, a lot of changes in your body uh, physically, and also some a lot of changes mentally. So that, that makes sense, right? Because if you're born in 97 and then 2010 is when the increase in spikes of suicide became more rampant, uh, that makes them 13 years old. And you know, kids now are born in a different time and a lot of the um, teens are, and adults too, but a lot of teens are more susceptible to this in my opinion. They put value on how many likes they get, um, thumbs up likes on Instagram and other different uh, various social media platforms. And, you know, because it's the internet, people can put nice comments, but they could put mean comments. And I think a lot of uh, kids growing up, they're being a little bit more fragile and uh, some of that's just you can't really blame them because they're just they want acceptance but and they're just looking at their screens constantly and they put value on that so i think that's one of the reasons why kids are getting more depressed they're getting more uh self-conscious i mean they're putting on like all these different filters to make themselves look good on instagram and um uh, he he uh, definitely talks about that. Uh, the last thing I want to say is, uh, is there any type of solution to this problem? Uh, I only see two, two, two uh, possible scenarios, and I don't know if they're that likely. One is, well, I should, I should quickly backtrack. I think the main model for all these companies is they want your attention. They want to keep you glued on the screen, and you know, advertisers are paying a lot of money, so the longer you're on their app, the longer you're on their platform, the longer you're watching a YouTube video, advertisers are going to try to put their advertising, you know, ingrained in your brain. But that that's the model they have. So for one, the model has to change. Um, but money trumps all. And until the good guys, so to speak, there's, there's the people that are talking on the documentary, until these good guys, and maybe they are behind the scenes, they are trying to 
find a better model without losing money. Um, I don't know what that model is. I have no idea. I'm not an influencer. I'm not a programmer. I have no idea. I've thought about it, but if maybe they're trying to find some way, but if it, if the new model ends up losing money, it's just not going to happen. It's all about making money. That's just the way it is in life, unfortunately. Um, the second solution would be, or what could change things in, in, in the more positive direction would be if less people went on these platforms, spend less time on Google, less time on YouTube, less time in social media in general. This is highly, highly unlikely though but I'm just throwing it out there. If that were the case, they would be forced to change their business model. But I just don't, there's just no way, I, I just don't see that. And a quick uh, analogy would be um, fast food joint McDonald's. No matter how unhealthy it is, if the sales keep going up, they're gonna keep pumping you the french fries, the burgers, until the customer is not happy and they're not, giving you giving as long as the customer's not giving them their hard-earned money for that burger just like how as long as us because if you gotta think about it we're the customers we're the customers okay you know if you're paying for something uh, i should put put it this way if you're using a a platform and you're not paying for it and it's quote free guess who's the customer you are you just don't know it <laughs> you know you're the customer so until that changes, um, I don't, I don't, I don't see that happening. But that's the only thing I can think of. So that's my time in talking too much. You know, I lost my train of thought on the because uh, I had a, I got cut off. But that's my time. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, let me know you guys and guys' thoughts. I'll talk to you later. Bye.